I'm going to show you how to get more free organic traffic from Google without money or expensive SEO tools. And anyone can succeed with this process as long as you're willing to put in a little bit of sweat equity. My name is Nathan Gotch, the founder of Gotch SEO Academy and the author of The SEO Entrepreneur. And I've led hundreds of successful SEO campaigns over the last decade. And my work is featured on SEMrush, Ahrefs, and Search Engine Journal. So please like this video to show me you're excited and let's dive in. So number one, create a folder within Google Drive and name it SEO campaign. Number two, make sure Google Analytics 4 and Google Search Console are installed on your website. Number three, tap into your existing keywords. So open Google Search Console, go to performance, search results, and make sure you click impressions and average position. Click the date range and select the last 16 months. Then export the report and add it to your Google folder. Go open the Google Sheet and click on queries. This is a sample of 1,000 keywords that your website is ranking for in the top 100. Add category to column F, right click on the first cell and click drop down. Now add low hanging fruits, existing and clustering opportunities. Then copy this filter for the entire column. Now just categorize these keywords based on the following criteria. Any keyword ranking from positions two to 15 is a low hanging fruit. Any keywords ranking from position 16 to 50 is existing and any keywords beyond position 50 is a clustering opportunity. Now, let me show you how to expand your keyword database even more so you don't even need to think about keywords for at least a year. Go back into Google Search Console and click on the Pages tab. Click on one of your best performing URLs and then go back to the Queries tab. Now you'll have a sample of 1,000 keywords specific to that URL. Just export these ideas and add them to your keyword database and categorize like the previous step. I recommend repeating this process for at least your top 10 URLs. So at this point, you should have thousands of keywords categorized based on their position. Now it's time to add another layer of categorization, which is based on search intent. Good news, I create a filter to make this much easier and it's in the video description below. Copy the formula, paste the formula in, and make sure it says A2 in both spots or whatever column and row your keywords are in. Hit enter and then drag the cell down and this formula will automatically categorize the keywords based on two primary categories of intent, informational and commercial. And if you see uncategorized, it just means that it doesn't fall into these two categories. So now it's time to pick some keyword targets. Use the filters to show low hanging fruit keywords with commercial intent. These are my favorite keywords to focus on at the beginning of a campaign because of organic click through rate or CTR for short. The number one spot on Google can generate between 16 to 30% CTR, which means for every 100 searches, your page is getting between 16 to 30 clicks. This is important because most people think search volume is traffic, but it's not. Your organic traffic is based on how how many searchers actually click your URL. For example, the CTR for my keywords ranking from positions number one to three is 13%, but this gets chopped in half for keywords ranking from positions four to six, where the CTR is only 7%, but it gets worse. The CTR for seven and nine is around 2%, and that's why I recommend starting with low hanging fruits first. Think about it, if you go from number four to number three, that's a 100% increase in total organic search clicks. But here's the point, you need to get into the top three to attract as many clicks as possible. So now the question is, how do you increase the rankings? Well, that's the other good news about low hanging fruits because you're clearly doing something right since Google's algorithms have put your page in that spot. So with just a few adjustments, we can likely take the number one spot. Here's how. Number one, optimize user experience or UX. So run your URL through Google PageSpeed Insights and if your page scores below 80 on desktop or mobile, then it's an opportunity. And the easiest way to improve loading speed is to make sure your images are sized correctly. For example, the content container on Gotcha SEO is 700 pixels wide. That means my images should be equal to or less than 700 pixels and this will prevent downsizing. Next, run your images through Optimizilla to compress them and then convert them to WebP format. Some 
sometimes this is enough to get above 80 on Google PageSpeed Insights. And the added bonus of optimizing your images is that you'll need to re-upload them, which makes your page appear fresher. For example, if you inspect Element on any page, you can see the date an image was uploaded. Ideally, your images should be uploaded within the current year to maximize freshness. Number two, give your content a facelift. And the best way to increase your rankings is just to simply make your content better. For example, Gotcha SEO was ranking in the top five for best CMS for SEO for many years, but then it started to slip and fell down to number 15. So I did a complete upgrade on this page by adding new data, and within a week, it popped back into the top 10 and is now sitting in the top three. This is the power of upgrading your content. There are many techniques you can use, but here are a few that work well. Add new information. So whether it's data, new techniques, or a better way of explaining something, adding fresh information, images, and videos that helps the searcher will likely benefit your rankings. Number two, tap into the People Also Ask section. Search your keyword on Google and look for ideas in the People Also Ask section. These are opportunities to add more meat to your page. Number three, examine who's beating you. For example, SEMrush is ahead of me for best CMS for SEO, and they have content about the characteristics of a good CMS for SEO. I can easily add a section to my content that highlights what I believe a CMS should have to be effective for SEO. Number four, use AI to guide you. So create a free HubSpot account, go to marketing and click on blog, then click on generate blog post. Enter your prompt and keyword and click next. HubSpot will then generate some titles for you to pick from and then it will give you an outline for the content. Then within a few short seconds, the tool will spit out a draft. Now you have a few options since you're upgrading an existing asset. First, examine Examine what it produced, take what you like, and add it to your existing asset after it's been edited. Second, you can use HubSpot's native AI tool to rewrite and expand on sections. For example, I highlighted the second paragraph, clicked the AI button, and had HubSpot's AI rewrite the paragraph. Then I did the same thing with this section and had it expand the content. You can also add content from the people also ask ideas you gathered earlier. For example, is HubSpot CMS good for SEO can be placed in a frequently asked questions section. Click the AI button, select generate paragraph, and within seconds, you'll have a solid answer to that query that adds more depth to your SEO content. Now keep in mind that any AI generated content should be viewed as a first draft. You need to add human elements into it, otherwise it's too robotic. I'd also use Grammarly to make the quality of the content even better. But using a free tool like HubSpot is an insanely fast way to add meat to any content asset. I'll have a link below this video where you can sign up for HubSpot for free. They have a generous amount of free tools you could take advantage of for your SEO campaign. So once you've made substantial upgrades to your page, I recommend changing the publish date to today and then submitting the page inside of Google Search Console so you can request indexing. Then click test live URL and this will put your page in a queue to get crawled and re-indexed. And now let's move on to number three, which is nail the on-page SEO basics. So make sure your target keyword is in your URL, title, H1, and first sentence. This is bare minimum on-page SEO. But one warning, if you're ranking well, but your keyword phrase is not in URL, then I'd just leave it alone. I only change URLs when the page is underperforming. And now, number four, leverage your existing authority. So download Screaming Frog SEO Spider because it allows you to crawl up to 500 pages on your website for free. Go to configuration, click on crawl config, go to spider and click on crawl. Uncheck everything in the resource links section and only keep the internal hyperlinks and external hyperlinks checked under page links. Go to the API access and connect Google Analytics 4 and Google Search Console and then start the crawl. And after it's done, enter your target URL into the search and scroll over until you see crawl depth. This is how many clicks it takes to get to your URL. In general, your page should be no more than three clicks deep. But if it's a really important page, I recommend making it no more than one to two two clicks deep, like I did with my best CMS for SEO page, which lives on the Gotcha SEO homepage. The next one to look at is unique inlinks, which is the quantity of pages on your website that are internally linking to your target page. You want this number to be as high as possible. So look for pages on your website where you can drive some more internal links to your page. So now let's move on to the final way to increase your rankings for an existing page, which is number five, become a topic authority. So go back to Google Search Console and click on the Pages tab and find the target URL you're trying to improve rankings for. Go back 
to the Queries tab and export these ideas. Now look at keywords that are ranking from positions 50 to 100. These are opportunities to build hyper-relevant topic authority. In other words, you're going to create new pages targeting these keywords because they should have different intent. For example, within a few minutes, I was able to identify nine unique keywords that deserve their own dedicated page, like CMS market share and usage statistics, which is a perfect opportunity to create a data-driven piece of content. Now, the goal of this process is to build support around your main asset, which helps build micro topic authority and gives you more opportunity to build internal links. So now that you've seen how to improve rankings for an existing page, let me show you how to build a new SEO driven asset from scratch. For this example, I'll use how does CMS help SEO? So go back to your campaign folder, create a Google doc and title it as the keyword. And we'll start by analyzing the competitors, open Google, enter your keyword, and then search the page for the specific phrase. Based on my example, I see that there are no pages specifically targeting this keyword phrase, and that means it's worth pursuing. Also, take note of any cert features you see, like in my example, where there's a featured snippet and a people also ask section. So now open the top three competitors to identify strengths and weaknesses. For example, Constant Contact has an informative, well-structured page for SEO, but it lacks visual and engaging elements. So the next step is to use Google Gemini to create an SEO content outline. So use this prompt and within a few seconds, you'll have a solid outline to work with. And now from here, you have two options. Number one, write it yourself and if you go this path you'll need to identify a word count target copy the content from one of your top competitors and paste it into this free SEO word counter tool I created based on my competition I should aim for around 1500 words and now it's time to write and I recommend writing it within Hemingway editor so your content is effective and high quality and after you've completed your draft run it through Grammarly to fix any spelling grammar or sentence structure issues so just to give you some perspective I wrote a script for this video you're watching right now and at this exact exact point it's about 2,000 words and it's taken me about three hours to get to this point so plan accordingly if you're writing it yourself and that brings us to option two which is have Google Gemini write it for you now the way to do this right with Google Gemini is to create one section at a time so for example all I did was copy the first section ask Gemini to write it and then within seconds it spit out a solid foundation repeat this for every section and you'll have a great first draft to work with now notice that I said first draft because you need to go through and add some human elements in there. But even then, using AI to create the asset is 80% faster than writing it yourself. So now that you know how to optimize existing content and create new content, it's time to acquire backlinks to your website. So here's the deal. The number one value proposition for getting backlinks is money, but we have to stick to the $0 criteria. So with that in mind, you're going to have to use sweat equity to get quality backlinks. And the best technique is old school, but it still works and that's good old guest posting. So go to Google, enter a search string like your keyword plus write for us and use the data miner plugin to export the results. And I'll have a list of search strings you can use below this video. Now go to Hunter, use it to find contact details and then use an outreach template like this. This is a numbers game and you need to commit to sending at least five to 10 pitches a day. And don't write the content ahead of time. Wait until your idea gets approval and then produce it. And one last technique you can use to attract backlinks naturally is to build lots of link bait. In short, think of your link bait strategy as throwing lots of lines into the ocean. The more bait you put out there, the more likely you are to attract backlinks. So here are three link bait frameworks that are proven to work. Number one, create free tools. And no, you don't need to be a developer. You can build these free tools for free using ChatGPT, like how I built this script timer. Number two, create reference bait. Journalists go to Google to find data and research to support their articles. And you need to show up when they're conducting these searches because you'll often get the link credit, like how Exploding Topics capitalized on the ChatGPT craze and created a data-driven asset that's acquired an insane 1,300 referring domains. Use ChatGPT to get inspiration by using this prompt. Which brings me to the next technique, number three, be the first mover. Most SEO professionals create content based on existing keyword data, and this works fine for evergreen topics, but it's ineffective catching trending topics. And that's why I recommend allocating some time every single day to researching trends on Reddit, TikTok, X, YouTube, or any user-generated content website. 
Most trends start on these platforms and then the SEO tools show data long after the trend has spiked. And as a trend forms, most people end up going to Google to learn more about it. So if you're the first to move on these topics, you'll get all the benefits. And it'll likely be short term because the juggernaut websites will eventually catch on. But by that time, you'll likely have already capitalized on the traffic and linking activity. So that's how you do SEO with zero dollars. It's not easy and I wouldn't recommend it long term because there are much more efficient ways to conduct an SEO campaign. And the cool part about SEO is that your results aren't dependent on how hard you work. Instead, your results are a byproduct of your systems. For example, I've spent the last year rebuilding my SEO system inside of Gotcha SEO Academy because of all the new AI technology that makes SEO easier than ever. So if you'd like to join hundreds of other agency owners and SEO professionals, then apply today because it's free. I'll have a link below the video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.